This is a continued discussion from the previous episode of a Fresh Perspective podcast brought to you by Corbion. Last year, let's say, if you ran some of those varieties that you were testing in Kansas, were those just a wash then because the because of how bad the crop uh, yeah, was in it, Kansas? It helps putting them next to each other so that so that you can tell the good ones were bad and these ones were bad, so you're not quite as critical. Yeah, we, we, we have lost data in some years because you just you don't know enough to to make a decision. So typically what would happen in a year like this is the plant breeder would re-enter their varieties again next year. So we'd get uh. another year of look at them if they weren't happy with what they saw. But even that kind of overestimates the importance of, of, of just what we're doing because these plant breeders know what they have. They know because of their lineage, you know, the varieties that they've bred together. They know from their quality program, they've thrown out the bad varieties a long time ago. Sure. It takes them like 10 or 12 years now to go from a cross where you just take one piece of pollen and one ovary and put it together, it's about 10 years until you're selling seed to somebody. Oh, wow. So it takes a long time to, to get enough seed to, to actually market. And in that time frame, there's a lot of other quality work going on. So they're running some of the gluten tests and some of the protein tests that are expected. And so they've made a lot of the decisions long before we get a look at it. In fact, they know, the plant breeders know when they enter a variety, they don't want to enter a, something that the millers don't like or the bakers aren't going to want. They're, they're, in, they're entering their elite lines that have a history of passing all the quality tests. So even though we may lose a sample or, or two this year, it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world for the baker. When you mention baker, that brings up a good point then. So we've gone through the milling process, mm -hmm. right? So how, how does that affect the baker in the end? How, how do the bakers then find the best and, and how, does it, how do they get to that point? The way I, I, I would tend to say it is the bakers have a finished product that has to be made and, and it has to be made somehow with the, with the flour or their additives that they're buying. If they're struggling with that, then, then the mil sometimes they switch millers, sometimes they switch ingredient suppliers. They'll go through a process of trying to make sure their product is what we want to. But for the miller side, they're going to always be changing the blend to stronger or weaker, depending on what the customer feedback is, is giving them. Okay. So the millers are constantly moving to acquire wheat and, and keep the, their customers happy. And to me, it's a matter of course. It's just something sure. that the, the industry does. Sure. Now, you mentioned protein content. That's interesting to me. Is it, are we always looking for additional pro protein content? Are we always looking to keep it high? We, we would like to keep it high because protein gives you a little more tolerance in the bakery, uh, oh. gives you a little more water absorption in the, ba in the bakery. So uh, protein in general is a good thing. We like to get it for free. We like the, the, the farmers to grow high protein wheat so that you don't have to pay extra for it. So yes. if we have a low protein crop, primarily because we have a rec if we have a big crop, it's hard to have a huge production crop with high protein. It, it just oh. usually goes, it's usually lower protein. And in those situations, it's better to buy spring wheat that's higher protein to blend it in than it is to buy it all from one location. I see. Sense. Okay. So you can blend it together from different locations. The, the, mills are, the mills are blending wheat classes together. They're, they're blending locations together all the time. Again, if, if you pictured what a miller has a, as a goal for the year, they, don't, they want their customer to be happy. Their customer is going to want to be consistent. So, so they can't just give them good flour one day and bad flour the next. <laughs> right. So they, they've got to buy from the areas where the wheat's good enough that it's always going to be good and they can consistently buy it. And the millers probably won't change something until something happens something prompts them to change that sure. they, they, everybody likes consistency for right. sure right i would think as a baker that would be my number one right you, you i would, would just want that. my right. cakes to always be exactly the same or That's my right. breads exactly when when we talk about the crop being stressed this year so you know what will the finished products look like well i would bet you that uh, a month or two from now, the finished products are going to look similar to what they do now. The industry won't let it change to 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 looking at bad bread or sure or bagels that that there's no hole in them or or they're too small. The, the, <laughs> the industry is going to adapt to to whatever is grown. 
we're in the process, as I said, of just, just getting th the combines are just rolling in Kansas as we speak, and it's going to take another month probably before we have a good handle on what did we grow this year, how are we going to put it together. It'll take some, some time before we know what we've got. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm a baker and I'm just learning about the Wheat Quality Council, what should I know about it? How can I check what what's coming down the pike at me? How, what should I what should I know? Where should I look? For me, what 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 I found in the seven years that that I've been running it, there was a time in our industry where all of the jobs were ag jobs were filled with ag kids. You know, they were they were out on the farm. They sold seed. They worked at the country elevator. That's no longer the case. First of all, there aren't enough ag kids anymore. There, there, there's not as many farmers as we used to have. And second of all, there's too many jobs. I mean, there, there are jobs like the Wheat Quality Council and the Core Beyond and companies that, that if you grew up in the city, you would have never heard of before. And so there are jobs everywhere in agriculture but we're more removed from the farm than we used to be. So, so right. people now are entering jobs, and I'm sure at your company as others, they're hiring city kids for ag jobs because they're smart and they know what they're doing. However, they don't have an ag background. Yeah. One of the things the Wheat Quality Council offers twice a year is we actually take wheat tours out into the fields. And so we invite people, all of our membership, to send people out in with us to go look at the wheat crop before it's harvested. And this year, like in Kansas, we had like 106 people, probably 75 of which had never been in a wheat field before or <laughs> been in Kansas before. And so our wheat tours are three days of going around the state, stopping at wheat fields every 15 to 20 miles in different car loads with an expert that can train you. And we provide this training then for the industry on looking at wheat. You know, what, what does it look like? How does it produce the grain? What does, it, what does it look like in the field? How is this a good crop or a bad crop? We teach them all of those things so that they can go back to their job and it may not be in procuring wheat, but they can go back to their job in the ag industry and at least know, I've got some background. I saw it. I went and I was out there this year. I learned a lot. Here's, here's what happens. And so our Wheat Quality Council, you know, our major program is what we talked about, the testing of new wheat varieties. That's what we do. That's yeah. our purpose. But we also provide this service of of wheat tours that has turned out to make us more famous. I mean, more more well known for our wheat tours than we are for the variety work that we do. So it's worked out real well. That's amazing. I think that education is probably one of the most important things that you can do. Yeah. Right. Especially uh, oh, with yeah. the, like you said, you know, there are less ag kids. There are less kids in 4-H, you know, yeah. I have four kids and, and I don't know any of their friends that are doing 4-H. I no. grew up, every single kid I knew was in 4-H. Everybody raised a sheep. Everybody huh? had sheep and yeah. cows and horses <laughs> and right. chickens. That's so, right. um, yeah, things are changing. That's right. and. That's right. So I think that's incredible. I have a wheat field across the street from, from my home, and my kids are saying, is that soybeans? And I'm mm -hmm. like, what? No, of course it's not soybeans. It's wheat. Yeah. Um, so, you know. My favorite, we've had people get off the plane, and we take them out to a wheat field, and they said, I didn't know it was green. I said, what, what do you mean you didn't know it was green? They said, every picture of a wheat field has always been brown or, or brown. straw colored. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, it's it's been a nice, and I kind of live for that, and it's been a nice thing for our council to 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 get a name, and, and to be associated with a with a piece of the business where you're actually training young people primarily, which is real fun. Real so fun. fun. So, do you have a website then? We do. www.wheatqualitycouncil.org, uh, and uh, you'll there you'll find information on our quality programs, um, on our on our our wheat tours, our, our uh, the invitations and everything are on there, and it's just kind of a that's kind of, kind of we keep track of everything archived. We can go back and tell you what we thought of the crop 30 years ago, and we can tell you what the wheat varieties were like 30 years ago. It's just kind of a nice little, it's a nice little resource. Little historical tool there, mm -hmm. and then you can see what, what wheat you're looking at now, and, and then when spring wheat comes around, we can see what yeah, that looks like, absolutely. right? Absolutely, absolutely. We're going, uh, 
We have a spring wheat crop tour coming up uh, in Jul July 24th through the 27th. And again, on the website, you'll see that information if anybody's interested in uh, actually going. We go out in the fields, and it's not in a bus load. We go out in cars on different routes and uh, meet together every night to have dinner. And uh, it's really a nice training program. <laughs> That's so excellent. Awesome. Anything else we need to know about the Week Quality Council? This has been so informative. Uh, no, I think I, I think I talked <laughs> through <laughs> everything everything I have. It's uh, it, it, as I say, I, we're not short on membership. We, all the millers are involved, so I, I, do, I we're not short any millers. It's kind of been interesting. The hardest group to get involved with the Wheat Quality Council are the grain elevators, oh. and those are the ones that are actually storing the grain and moving it. And I think for them, they don't care whether we grow soybeans or wheat or corn as long as we, they move it, as long as it goes through their elevator. So they don't quite have the ownership in right. the wheat side of it that the millers and the bakers have. So I guess that's just something we're going to have to live with. But <clears throat> we'd like to have more grain people involved, but we okay. don't. So grain people, if you're here, if you're listening, mm -hmm. get involved. This is going to be excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. It's been really wonderful. And don't forget, preserve what matters. Thank you for listening to a Fresh Perspective podcast brought to you by Corbion. Until next time, preserve what matters.